Howdy, gang. I want to do a update. It's a current event update today of something I've been noticing here the last couple of months. Uh, as you know, I, I drive uh, oversized. I haul oversized uh, uh, units, we'll call them, vehicles, uh, like a, a construction office, a portable construction office, portable school buildings. I, I haul mobile homes, modular homes. One thing I do haul is... Uh, we call park model RVs, which is like a miniature mobile home. So I'm going to, here, I'll show you what they look like real quick here. This is a park model RV. You guys see them getting hauled around every now and then. They're technically an RV. They're only, they're about 12, 10 to 12 feet wide. And they're about 45 feet long. So because they have taillights and, and all the other self-contained amenities like, uh, you know, gray water and black water tanks. I got water supply, all that. It's technically an RV instead of a mobile home. Um, but anyway, uh, they do hook up to regular mobile home sites as well. But I want, I deliver these things and where I deliver them is at RV dealerships or I'll deliver them to a site or something like that. And something I've noticed is that RVs in general are on the rise. And they have been ever since COVID-19 broke out. So I'm going to document it here real quick. We have here Fox 28 out of some town. I don't know. Um, RV sales record high during the pandemic. That's May 29th. Savannah, Georgia. That's where that is. Got another one here. RV sales spike as many look to travel while distancing. So like what they're saying is here, since you can't fly is, uh, as easily as you used to be able to. Well, they're looking to travel through RV. I mean, a lot of people got money, I guess. They can go out and just buy an RV when they want. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, RV sales increase at local dealers during the pandemic, July 21st. We have this other one here, uh, June 12th. RV sales skyrocket as new way to go on vacation travel in era of coronavirus. One more, virus pandemic spurring rise in RV sales. Interesting. So I have I actually have delivered at quite a few of these dealerships, and I spoke to a couple of them last week and asked them about it because I noticed, I mean, their lots are empty or they're, everything in the lot's already sold or something like that. They haven't moved it out. Now, some of them have brand new, you know, equipment that hasn't been sold yet, but they might have a separate lot for all their sold stuff and all this is gone, you know? Uh, and I'm talking to them and they're like, we cannot keep anything in stock. I mean, they get a fifth wheel camper coming in two days later, it's gone. They haven't even gotten it ready to sell, but people are driving by buying them right off the street. Now we know that when this pandemic occurred, uh, when it began and the government kicked out a stimulus, the, it included things like, unemployment but above and beyond unemployment it was like 600 bucks a week it was more than people were making every month and so it is quite possible that people are looking at this and and saying hey we got an extra 2400 a month let's go get an rv we can't fly let's drive and it's a great way to see the country by the way i've seen it all uh but <laughs> they you can't I cannot understand. Did they think this was going to last forever? Because there is a, a, a sunset on that whole six hundred bucks a week. Uh, you know, maybe they thought, well, you know what? When it when it kicks off or whatever, we'll use the vehicle and then let it get repoed. I have no idea, but I mean, it's to me, it's, it's pretty silly or stupid, maybe, to just squander because we don't even know what the future is going to bring in this country, right? Maybe people are thinking, oh, we're going to get back to normal and do this stuff as long as we get the vaccine and so on and so forth. So let's just get an RV. We're good to go. But I think there's another, another thought to this as well because there are people with the eyes to see and the ears to hear. I mean, God's word clearly says that we're going into captivity. And when that time hits, we know that there's going to be a, a global system it's going to require everybody it, to to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And I'm quoting from Revelation 13. If you want to check it out, they're going to have to take that mark in order to buy or sell. And that means buying not just food, 
and clothing, it's buying your shelter. It's it's paying your lease, your mortgage, your rent. It's paying all the utilities, your phone. Everything is going to require some sort of payment. And unless you don't mind being a part of this system, you have to be thinking to yourself, wow, I might be... Um, I might have to give it all up. <laughs> what are we going to do? You know, what are we going to do if if uh, we can no longer, we don't want to be a part of the system, we can no longer make a mortgage payment or something like that. Now, there is a, that would ultimately lead to foreclosure, right, on your home or eviction on your apartment or coughing up your lease on whatever place you're at. And, I mean, maybe people are thinking that. Maybe they're thinking, what am I going to do? If that comes to that, I need to have a shelter for my family. And I think a lot of people that do know the truth are buying these up, getting ready for that day where they may have to potentially surrender their home and flee or go somewhere. Now, that's just an opinion of mine. I don't know that that's really what everyone's thinking. Maybe some of them are thinking that way and some are thinking, no big deal, let's go get an RV and party on. I don't know. But if you do have eyes to see and ears to hear and you do know this is coming, uh, it, you're probably thinking already, I need to look at how I'm living. Am I living within my means? Am I, or am I going to get sucked into this B system? And if I, if I don't want to be a part of that, what, what measures should I be taking right now to make sure that uh, I can provide for my family and so forth? Now, we know that the father will take care of his children, but he does put it into their hearts to prepare for things. You know, he did that with Joseph. You know, Joseph made Pharaoh a lot of, a lot of money, made him a very rich man because every country in the world was buying grain and so forth from Joseph. And so he was a prepper, <laughs> you know, I think maybe we should all be thinking about preparing for hard times. What is where, you know, maybe lay it out. Like what are the different cases? Am I, this is a mild case, medium, and the very serious case plan for those. So you can institute those plans when that time comes or even before uh, I'm taking a look at some things right now where I'm doing this and um, realizing there's a lot of a lot of stuff I have I don't need. <laughs> you know, a lot of space I have I don't need. A lot of people are looking to downsize, get into something that they can own free and clear instead of being tied to a mortgage. So these are just things that I wanted to bring up. But when I talked to these dealers, they were saying their sales are up 600% over this time from last year. I mean, that is insane how fast these are going going out. Uh, it's just something to think about. I thought I'd, I thought I'd let you guys know what I'm seeing out here. So uh, housing is a very important thing. Start thinking about what you're going to do for housing. Listen, we know that in the end, whenever that is, Show, should we be living in it right now? The very end is going to be consummated with a five-month period where the Antichrist and his fallen angels are basically going to deceive the whole world. And that's they are going to torment those that don't have the seal of God in their forehead. Uh, it'll be those that have the mark of the beast in their forehead. So one might actually think that that whole monetary system that could be coming is only going to last five months. And then we will have the return of Christ. But that is a very, that's a very suggestive opinion, okay? Like an educated opinion. It may not go down like that. It may be a couple of years, three and a half years, and then five months. Who knows how this time with absolute certainty is going to break out. But I do know that with absolute certainty that all of us need to be thinking about it. And thinking about how we're going to take care of our families during that time. What can we do for the Lord? How can we stay out of bondage? I mean, listen, if we are tied up into a, into this B system through bondage, we are not going to be able to serve the Lord as effectively as if we were free from it, right? So that's something to consider. Are you living within your means? And if you are not, 
what measures can you take to m- allow yourself to live with, within your means? Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to bring this to you. Something I'm noticing out here, but RV sales skyrock, record numbers, record numbers. And I'm, I think there's more. Kind of, they can't keep any of this in stock. So if you're thinking about it, if you're thinking of getting an RV, you might start thinking about about it soon. You know, maybe look into some used stuff. I don't know. Just something to think about as a sort of a fallback plan on whatever you plan on doing. Anyway, God bless you guys. I just want to bring that to you. Let me know what you think. Share the video if you can. We'll talk to you later. See ya.